Thanks so much. Imagine you walk into a restaurant and the lines just are so long you never get the chance to eat or you make it in, but there's no place to sit and eat. Well, some Carroll High School students and their parents say that's the situation at the new school's cafeteria. Reina Rodriguez went to check things out. She's just saying that it's pretty crowded. Um, there's not enough seating. She said that there were kids sitting on the floor while they're eating. That's the situation many parents say their students at Carroll High School have experienced during lunch since returning to school earlier this week. The school's principal, Robert Arredondo, saying he's received calls from parents who are worried about the overcrowding at the campus's cafeteria. And we handled those and, and actually we extended our lunch day one because students you know, in any campus, uh, the first uh, week is, is a learning process and you adjust the bell schedule to make sure everybody's needs are taken care of. There are nearly 1,800 students enrolled at Carroll High School and only two lunch periods, 35 minutes each. Some believe that is not enough and say more is needed to better accommodate hundreds of students at once. Probably make multiple lunches, not just two, maybe three or four and kind of spread it out to ensure that every student has a seat and is able to get their lunch in a timely manner to be able to eat and not have to gobble it down before they go back to class. School officials say it's a matter of time before they learn their new facility, monitoring and addressing opportunities to become more efficient, recently making changes to reduce overcrowding. We decided to open up our patio for the first time, which we couldn't do day one because it would cause too much confusion. We opened up up uh, an upstairs uh, seating area and uh, we opened up a library area for seating. Arredondo says that helped move the flow as they wrapped up the first week back to school. Like our first lunch shift it was 10 minutes. The line was was gone within 10 minutes and second lunch shift was within uh, um, five minutes. Reina Rodriguez, Chris 6 News. From feeding to safety. Five different school districts are getting a boost in security thanks to Claiborne County Attorney that's uh, Kira Taylor Sanchez. She donated $5,000 each to Kingsville, Rivera, Ricardo, and San Gutrudis ISDs for security increases at their district schools. Today, we spoke with Kingsville ISD Superintendent Sissy Perez about their measures that her district is taking to protect the students in wake of the Uvalde shooting. Now we're concerned even more so about school security. So we've hired seven security officers. We're gonna have two at every secondary campus and one at every elementary campus. We're getting them trained through the Guardian program so they'll be armed. And so at least our students and our staff can feel um, safer about being at school and they don't have to have that stress on their mind. They can concentrate on the academics. Go, no word exactly how each district will use that donation. School report cards are out now. The Texas Education Agency released its accountability ratings for the 2021-22 school year. School districts all across the state are rated based on student academic performance. And here's a look at just some of them. Kingsville ISD telling us that they've come a long way. The last time they received a rating was uh, from TEA. It was from 2018. It was an F rating. Well, today they earned a 78. And while the superintendent tells us that they still have their work to do, they are proud of the progress that they've made given the COVID-19 pandemic and other obstacles the school district has faced. Ingleside ISD also released its accountability ratings today. Here's a look at them school by school. Three campuses earning an A rating overall. The district earned a B rating, missing an A by one point. Continuing coverage right now on this massive fire that broke out on the city's north side. This happened yesterday just before 1 p.m. on North Staples. A car caught fire, but the flames quickly spread to a nearby vacant building. Smoke could be seen from all across the city. Fire crews finally got things under control after about an hour. They did not clear that scene, though, until 6 p.m. last evening. There's still no word on what started that blaze. No one was hurt. An invasive species of crayfish is causing some concern from Texas Parks and Wildlife. Specimens of the Australian red claw crayfish were recently collected in the Brownsville area. They grow up to about two pounds and are edible, but officials say that they can negatively impact our local species. Australian red claw crayfish also carry a disease that's called crayfish plague. It can impact native populations. Now, if you happen to spot one, report it to the Texas Parks and Wildlife Department. 
Seniors impacted by inflation rates could see a major boost in their Social Security checks next year. Thanks to the record high inflation numbers for July, those checks could go up by nearly $160 a month next year. The annual cost of living adjustment is based on inflation readings for July, August and September every year. Analysts are expecting an inflation adjustment of more than 9%. The city of Beeville changing its way in the way that it notifies residents about code violations. City code enforcement recently started adding these yellow signs to the yards of residents whose properties are in violation of the city's maintenance law that does include high weeds or grass, trash or junk cars. The signs are in addition to the existing process of mailing letters to residents. The city hopes that it will just quicken the process of compliance. One lifetime resident tells us she just hopes that this will make people maintain their properties. People need to keep their um, residences uh, looking nice and makes uh, good improvements for the city, for the community. And get this, city officials say they've already had multiple residents fix issues after those signs were placed on their lawns. Special delivery, how one fast food restaurant is giving back to local communities in need. You can really see the difference from two months ago to now, and it's beautiful for me. Some welcome relief soaring into the picture. Rising travel prices continue to wind down. In three minutes, why this fall could be the best time to take that big trip. Soaring prices forced many of us to skip that summer vacation, but new numbers show a sunnier travel forecast heading into the fall. Emily Akita shares some tips on snagging a great deal. After a chaotic summer travel season marred by sky high prices and constant flight disruptions. We're very anxious. We just want to get home. Some welcome relief soaring into the picture. With this week's inflation report showing travel prices are dropping across the board, including airfares, rental cars, hotels, and gas. An improvement being celebrated by budget conscious travelers who skipped summer vacations to avoid the painful price tag. I can really see the difference from two months ago to now, and it's beautiful for me. As kids head back to school and the summer travel rush eases, industry experts predict travel demand will continue to drop. What? does that in turn do to prices? That decrease in demand uh, tends to drive prices down. So it makes prices more competitive for people who do have the flexibility to hit the road this fall. Travel app Hopper reports flights will be nearly 40% cheaper than summer's peak, sinking below pre-pandemic prices. Airlines already slashing prices to San Diego, Portland and Salt Lake City by more than $200. And travelers are saving big at hotels in Hawaii and Florida, along with international stays in Turks and Caicos and Greece. The majority of Americans are planning a trip in the next six months, according to a recent survey. And many are leaning on credit card rewards to help ease the burn of inflation. Credit card points and miles can do a lot for you. Uh, they not only often give you a little bit more flexibility, but it means you don't have to put cash on the line. To stretch your dollar the furthest, experts also recommend travelers start tracking flights now with price monitoring tools. Book at least three weeks in advance for domestic flights and a month ahead of international trips. And remember, Friday night stays have been the most expensive this year. So fly and check into your hotel midweek if you can. All of it helping to make your next getaway more affordable. And taking a road trip this fall is also looking pretty promising right now. According to AAA, right now, the average of a gallon of unleaded is sitting at right about $3.97. In Texas, drivers are seeing $3.48 at the pump. Here in Corpus Christi, way cheaper than that. We're seeing an average of about $3.24. And as we take a look at traffic on the JFK Causeway, a little heavy there, but moving uh, smoothly away from the island towards downtown. And look at SPID. Now, that's a lot of traffic headed out to the island on the left-hand side there, so pretty heavy and definitely slowing down. Let's take a look at uh, Park Road 22 and Commodores. Again, there's a big backup right there at the traffic light. Uh, people headed home, you can see the slowdown right there. It's not stopped, but it is uh, slowed down. And then, of course, you've got Saratoga here, stop and go all along it, especially around 
uh, Staples and Everhart. There is a, a problem on uh, South Padre Allen Drive turning into North Padre Allen Drive here. Looks like maybe an accident in both directions, very slow, and also on the Crosstown Expressway before you get to the flyover and into the downtown area. So, 25 minutes to the island, 10 minutes downtown to Portland, and 15 downtown to Cal Allen. What's going on with our weather? A lot to talk about, and I'll tell you about it next. <laughs> no, that, that was a great show. Man, a lot of folks didn't know. There's a, there's a lot of material that I learned today that I didn't know. Amazing. I'm, I'm just super impressed, and I am just, you know, speechless. I, th I was just outstanding. It was really uh, a great piece of history. It is well done. Rave reviews last night at the premiere of Summer of 42, The Coastal Bend Goes to War. I did have the honor of putting that documentary together and hosting last night's premiere aboard the USS Lexington Museum. Now the Chris Six News documentary takes a look back at how the Coastal Bend came together to support our nation's effort to win World War II. So tonight you can find out what it was really like right here on the home front of the Coastal Bend as the entire world fought for freedom. Don't miss it tonight, 6.30 right here on Chris 6, and we will stream it live, ChrisTV.com. Now, your Chris 6 weather forecast. Well, our weather pattern has changed. It uh, definitely looks more like rain outside than it does uh, drought and uh, heat. So uh, we've had the heat, but uh, we've also seen uh, improving conditions here rainfall wise. This is the third day in a row we've had some rain in the area coming from the north. Yeah, I know it hasn't rained at your house or mine in the city, but at least uh, we're seeing showers in the viewing area. And right now the activity that was causing lightning and thunder uh, on the west side of town is over with. But up around Beeville and along and just east of 37 there in northern Live Oak County, there are additional storms. None of this is severe. These showers have pretty much dissipated for now. And our almanac shows we had 99 degrees today in spite of all that cloud cover. Morning low was 78. 10 inches below normal on the rainfall. We definitely need it. We're definitely going to get it. Some showers around the airport and 85 right now. East winds at 15 miles an hour. As far as the temperatures uh, elsewhere, it's only 81 rain cool degrees. That's what happens when it rains and our temperatures will be going down uh, both day and night with the rain coming in over the weekend and into Monday. But 81 in Beeville and 96 where they haven't seen much in Kingsville at all. So here is a look at the hour by hour forecast. Winds nearly calm overnight. We will see some uh, thunder showers near the coast and temperatures dropping through the 70s around and just before daybreak. Then we'll see additional activity in the morning. So we're going to elevate from isolated today to scattered tomorrow to numerous tomorrow night and over the weekend. We're watching an upper level disturbance nearby uh, that is causing uh, perhaps a low level disturbance and that would be a, a tropical disturbance in the northwestern Gulf with increasing rain chances staying in place all the way into Monday now. Heavy downpours are expected with this activity and some flooding will be occurring in the area, especially low lying areas and areas that are prone to flooding here because of poor drainage and rainfall amounts will vary widely from one to four inches. There could be more in spots. All right, here is the Doppler radar. A satellite loop and it does show this moisture coming at us from the Houston area. That's where the additional rain will develop overnight after midnight. I think it'll quiet down here around sunset and lots of moisture in the Gulf and now it's all over us and this has traveled all the way across the Gulf. Again, there's a little bit of uh, disturbance right in here uh, in south off the coast of uh, Louisiana. That's going to track to the southwest be south of us and that's what's going to give us the rainfall opportunity. You can see the moisture picking up here and uh, all of a sudden this area of dryness in the mid and upper level of the atmosphere is gone because of this upper level low stirring things up causing lift and instability and again that's going to track off to the west and the instability around this is in red and you can see that uh, really getting here by tomorrow evening. So if you have plans to do something outdoors this weekend your best shot is tomorrow morning, but that's no guarantee that you won't get wet. 
and then it really launches into us here by Sunday morning and that's when the mother load of this rain is going to occur during the day on Sunday and still around on Monday morning around 4 a.m. and then it just dramatically goes away after that. So the water vapor uh, imagery shows a huge slug of moisture coming at us here and again this is primarily on Sunday that we're going to see this happen. The uh, rainfall looks like this across the region and again it picks up during the morning hours tomorrow, break in the afternoon, and then we'll see it really develop here on Sunday with that moisture coming through the region. And this low coming back to the south and west may develop a little bit.